Our trip starts at Glen Canyon Dam. This is near Page, Arizona. Lake Powell is behind it. We look down at the tail race where there's large transformers, which Larry Dalsberg's looking over here. Our crew walks across the top of this great cement dam. These transformers convert the electricity to high tension lines, which take the strength of the river away from it to Los Angeles. This dam runs on peak shaving. Rigging on the beach always takes a lot of time. We pump up a lot of the boats by hand and with a foot pump. Putting rowing frames on. And a big hand pump there. The Arizona River Runners is a professional group that takes to four or five hundred dollars each. Let's compare our little raft right next to theirs. They have a motor. We don't. Paul Allison checks in with the Park Service. You've got to have a permit to run this trip. And permits are only allowed for about 5% of the private trips. Downstream, we reach Vasey's Paradise late in the day. It's a beautiful pipe spring. It just erupts from the cliff high overhead, cascading down to the river through a patch of poison ivy. Here we refill our water jugs with this delicious cool water. One of the best water stops in the whole canyon. You know it's poison ivy. You see that three leaf cluster? John Cross and John Martin are in that red canoe. That looks pretty good near that green patch of poison ivy. It's early morning. It's a quiet scene. We've had some difficulties in House Rock Rapid upstream, and Keith and Dammy Thomason are repairing the rowing frame, which got broken up when the raft folded around it. Bill Bernard gets breakfast going, yet the repairs continue. It's great to have a father and son team on these exploring adventures. There's half the frame going back in. That lightweight electrical duct just wasn't quite strong enough. Beautiful reflections. It's a double reflection from the sun shining on the cliff across the river. I have to carry the rafts back down to the river because it's low tide now. The river fluctuates every time somebody turns on another toaster in Los Angeles between morning and evening. We go through this particular rapid with buddy boats. Two rafts running at the same time, same as you would do in swimming. Each explorer takes a turn at the oars, the most experienced one going through the heaviest water. Everybody wants to row. Boy, it's cool in the early morning before the heat of the day gets to us, and then it's over 100 degrees Fahrenheit in the hot depths of the Grand Canyon. The sand on this steep beach is fast eroding because the river carries away the sand and there's none to replenish it. It 
quite changes the habitat for the fish and waterfowl downstream from Page and Glen Canyon Dam. Ah, beautiful green water, turquoise color. This is due to mineral springs upstream. It seems that everybody just likes to peel at this point and float down this beautiful green color in the little Colorado where it joins the main stream. You can sure tell where the tan stops. Everybody's out there and they're all together. You gotta wear sneakers though, post 20 requirement to keep feet from being cut up in the numerous rocks. Look how fast that color changes when those salts precipitate in the Colorado main stream. Mike Pruitt, our photographer, gets close for a Great shot of the red canoe. John Cross and John Martin. These guys have practiced for this trip in their decked canoe in the Salmon River the previous year. Again down the Colorado River through Quagant Rapids. Our procedure is to walk ahead, look over the trip, and find a safe route through it. And then the more experienced boatmen get the honor of leading first on this particular raft. And the canoe charges through. You notice they're going faster than the water. This is to maintain steerage. And they can punch right through those big waves, bracing as necessary. And cross bow, back in. Great job in there. This is Neville's Rapid. Now, that black dike in the background says that... Pants Rapid. We all look this one over. A lot of worry about it. This is the first biggie with a complicated route. We're gonna go right or left of that rock. Let's see, I think there's a neat route in here. Ken Jennings, one of our alumni who works for the Forest Service, is showing the route he's going to take. We'll watch him through later. Look at the water pour over those rocks below that black diagonal dike and strap. And the Titanic goes through first, rather whimsically named by Paul Ellison, our trip leader. I hope it has a better chance getting through here. Oh, Keith Tomlinson takes a tremendous stroke with that. Holds up a broken oar. Pulled too hard and snapped it right in two. On the far side, we see it's Boomer and John Van Bessem on the far side flying that flag. They're pioneering a different and more difficult route on the far side of the river. Each explorer chooses the route he wants and shows his medal. The photographer is going backwards through here, trying to photograph Ken Jennings' expression professional photographer from Exploring Magazine. Each explorer has to choose his route. He can't wait and make decisions in the river. It's just like time running in your life. You've got to move with it and make a decision at the right place at the right time. Wow, that's a strong one. Some of those holes just can't be avoided in this complicated route. And now comes the canoe. 
those guys still accelerating. You see they're going faster to the water. They're in a complicated route. They get out a little smoother water and make a hard left turn there to avoid that big stuff in the background. Good job crossing, Martin. Missed that big one just to the side of it. Look at all those rocks out there. And finally, with a post-20 flag, stretch goes through. A few times he's on camera. Thank you, Paul, for taking the movies. Again, we see that sturdy photographer, Mike Pruitt, working backwards, shooting pictures, trying for a facial expression for Exploring Magazine. He's kind of worried what's coming up behind him sticks to it with his waterproof Nikonis camera. We stop here at Clear Creek. This is one of the few places where fresh water comes into the Grand Canyon. And hardly any commercial rafts stop here because it's a very tight beach. We manage to squeeze in between the rocks and a little bit of sand that's there. Quite a challenging hike going upstream from here. We have to go over a narrow shoulder of this Vishnu Schist. These are the basement rocks, the oldest rocks in the whole Grand Canyon. Very tight beach. Pumping up the boats early in the morning. We got some vigorous water ahead of us. The next rapid is Granite. That's well downstream below Phantom Ranch. Here the whole river slams into a cliff on the river's right. Tremendous tail wave. Out of the way, Keith. You're blocking the picture. Uh-oh, out of control there. We better make a fast pivot. The oarsmen should be facing downstream. The canoe comes through. This is their grandest moment on film. Look for a fast cross base by the bowman. There he goes. And hits that one right head on, penetrating it. They made it through all the big rapids of the Grand Canyon without turning over. Oh, cross brace again. Keith, get out of the way. We you know you're there. Here comes Boomer again with John Van Vessen. They carry the nation's flag, very proud. And the assault craft, double rowing in it. A lot more power for a bigger raft. Boy, those waves break up high. Fairly safe tail waves. Hermit Rapid also has some beautiful tail waves in it. Tail waves are where the river piles up vertically to vet its velocity from the acceleration upstream. Oh, are they going over? Yes, they are. Slow motion roll. Tail waves tip them over. They're both up on the bottom now. Hopefully we'll see that self-rescue downstream. Next comes their buddy raft to help them out. Boy, Hermit's an exciting raft. Matt Balcom trying to do a good job there, loses his oars a little bit. Pushing ahead, trying to push through that dead water. Bauman points out a problem. See the rafts on the other side, waiting at the foot of the rapid. Just like riding a roller coaster. comes the canoe forward again. Oh, it looks like they're losing forward way again. A little bit slowed down. Hope they make it.
Whoops, John has lost his seat at the oars. Homer doesn't even know about it. John's getting back up, trying to get back to the oars. Really a big bounce there. And Hermit Rapid. And Jennings took his raft back up here for a second try at it. Eddie. Another warlock slipped out. Over they went. Pushed it too far into it. They're getting back up in the bottom. They get the bridle, turn over again. Back right side up as we look downstream. Crystal Rapid is one of the biggest complicated ones in the river. One must come in fairly close to the camera and avoid that huge hole in the background. Tremendous haystack behind it. Some people looking at that said you could see Jeep tire tracks down on the bottom of the hole, but I don't really believe that. There they go through it. Almost didn't make it. That's Keith Thomason again. Very close. That's too close for me. come into it almost over they go they got him too close to that haystack slowly rolled him over the other rafts downstream to help him get back up they're trying to execute a self-recovery up in the bottoms now comes the canoe the camera can hardly keep up with all the action it happens so fast big water John and Boomer again. They picked a good route. Lunchtime. Got to refuel all those pooped out explorers. Drink a little more. Using bailing buckets, some of the cups being lost. Trowel on the peanut butter. A little mustard in the peanut butter. Can you believe that? Elves Paradise. Many of the commercials stop here, and we do too. Fill our water jugs first. And with a nice jump down from the rocks overhead. Good thing we checked out that pool to make sure it's deep enough. A real oasis in the desert. Crawl up there through the choke stones and a fast leap into that deep pool. Oh, low tide again. Everybody teams up to lift the rafts back to where the river is. When we stopped the night before, it was about 15 feet higher. One of the many challenges in the Grand Canyon, as long as the dam is doing peak shaving, that is generating electricity when it's needed for Los Angeles. You really can't escape civilization, even in the bottom of Grand Canyon. Dubendorf Rapid. It's named for one of the early boatmen who was one of the river pioneers over 80 years ago, following Major Powell down this greatest river in the West, the Colorado River. Dubendorf had many roots in it. Each explorer has a choice of a different route, since there are several routes, some close to where we're watching, and yet some going in the background. Each young man likes the challenge of a new route, particularly to pioneer a new route, similar to pioneering a new route on a difficult mountain. Deer Creek Falls, beautiful place with a 
water pours out of the canyon almost into the Colorado River. We hike upstream to the top of the falls, where it's cutting rapidly through the sandstone. Some of the guys actually plunge into this upper falls, hundreds of feet above the river. And then looking over the canyon on our way back to the river. Where the side stream is cutting down, trying to reach the Colorado above Deer Creek Falls. At the top of the falls, we look down and see a commercial party. Are there rafts on the left? Our smaller rafts on the right. This is a favorite stop for the most vigorous people who wish to hike. Deer Creek Falls entrains a tremendous amount of air coming down. John Cross and Martin wade out into that. It's like walking up behind a propeller of an airplane. Polo Canyon. We made a ladder out of broken oars and ropes. Larry Dalsberg, our mountaineer, pioneered the route. And so us lesser skilled were able to climb up to a plunge pool overhead. We made the best use of our broken oars here. Other places nature has carved something which we can hardly conceive. This is in the solid marble of Mancatabia Canyon. We walk up to where the carvings are. The stream's quite warm. A lot of us uh, like take a bath in there. Look where the water runs down through the white marble. And back to the main river in the background. National Canyon Beach, one of the favorite stops, both for us and commercials. River main stream is in the background, but there's tremendous eddy here flowing back upstream towards where our cook fire is. Nowadays, one must take along gasoline to cook on. Wood fires were still permitted when this trip was done many years ago. Beautiful reflections early in the morning. Wave action washes all the mud out of a beautiful sandy beach. Just like being on the Gulf Coast of Florida. We stencil our oars to let people know who we are and also we can recover. So we hike up National Canyon. Paul Allison drops the rocks out of his shoes. Even when wading along with sneakers, you tend to pump the water up and rocks into your shoes. Beautiful reflections in a narrow little stream. We should look at the small view, this leaf going over a mini waterfall. And as it pours down, my, the sides pull into it just by surface tension attraction. Walking back, we seek out the shade wherever we can. Richie Lacasse, our botanist, who's gone on to work for the Bureau of Land Management, 
looks at some of the cactus and the few sprigs of vegetation that grow in this canyon. Formal dinner, you've got to wear a necktie if you don't wear anything else. Some of you fellows can even recognize your faces when you're a little bit younger in there. A few of the honored 500 milers sit on the poncho of honor. Paul Allison makes a toast. Stretch on the far side. Richie Lacasse in the background. A certificate is given to the boys who row over 500 miles with Explorer Post 20. This young man couldn't decide quite where to wash his skillet. Let's see, here or there or where? I've got to do the rough washing before I put it in the Clorox up to the fire. All dishes are washed in hot Clorox water after the rough washing is done. Vulcan's anvil, that's the hallmark of the big rapid downstream. Lava Falls, volcanic eruption spilled into the river here and made this the most difficult rapid. It does not have any very easy roots, tremendous holes in it. We carry a raft around to the bottom of it. I'd like to thank Forrest Strong for doing that, a safety raft, so the rest of us could take a try at it. Watch a commercial boat punch through on the right side, lipping and bucking. 20 people in that with a 40 horsepower motor. Well, that's not the way Post 20 does it. We're going to do it with our oars and the safety of this pickup raft at the bottom. We're skirting Lava Falls on the left. Very neat little route. Now the safety raft is in place, we'll see Richie Lacoste pioneering first raft through. Real honor for one of the alumni to do it first. He can make it in the big ones, by golly the rest of us sure can. Keith Thomason lets his boy row through here, but he can't resist pointing the better road to go. Let's get over here at the left in this sneak route. Neatly done. We avoided that rock, came in so right from it. Looks like John Dummer's up there in the bow. He's my boat buddy. He went up and got a second ride through. Everybody wants to ride the big one. Look at that wave bouncing off that right hand rock. what happens here, it folds up, this guy gets his head right in the crankshaft. The horse, get your head out of there, how can I roll that way? Carrying hard, the boy does a big hole on the right. Here's our far out flagship. Taking a tougher route yet. John and Boomer. And looks like they're gonna make it around that hole. Just barely tickling. Boy, that really takes courage to do that. Whoop. Looks like a horseman has fallen out, waves at the camera, gets back in. Younger explorer in the bow, never knew he was missing. Swamped, but they're still going. Vigorous white aerated water, Colorado River. What goes up must come down. We very carefully sounded this jumping point to make sure it was safe to jump off. 
Many of us jumped in. I'm glad I only had to run the camera here at high speed. I don't have to prove anything to anybody by jumping off that darn high rock. Well, soon we leave the river at Diamond Creek. That's the first road entry downstream. Regretfully, we leave the Grand Canyon, many of us for the last time. We'll join Highway 66 up by Peach Spring. In 1975, the National Office of the Boy Scouts of America was invited to have a photographer writer join our Grand Canyon raft trip. Michael Pruitt accepted this challenging professional assignment, joining Post 20 at Lee's Ferry, the start of our Colorado River trip. You've already seen him in action, going backwards through Hans Rapid, photographing Ken Jennings working at the oars. His article, The Ultimate Trip, was featured in the April 1976 issue of Exploring Magazine, with a front cover photograph of explorer John Dummer waking up in the Grand Canyon. This magazine was mailed to all registered Explorer Scouts in the United States. Explorer Post 20 Los Alamos felt this national recognition was quite an honor for their whitewater post in arid New Mexico. My Kiwanis Club sponsored Explorer Post 20, Boy Scouts of America, for young men, which I led for over 20 years, located in Los Alamos, New Mexico. We specialized in river running, in small road rafts, using our own river guides and our unit leadership, food packing in waterproof bags and a 30 passenger bus. This bus was afforded by utilizing the profits when operating a lunch bar at the local ski area in Los Alamos, New Mexico. Many members of the local Kiwanis Club volunteered to help this weekend operation where the explorers operated with only one paid employee, which kept the costs down. Practice roaring sessions took place on the nearby Rio Grande during spring high water. Local overnight trips were required for all prior to the big once a year trip on Western Rivers. All were tested for swimming skills. Much driving is necessary from this arid and southwest part of the USA to reach adequate rivers. Annual trips included the Salmon, Snake, Yampan Green, Grand Canyon and Cataract Canyon of the Colorado. Filming was done with a hand-wound 16mm Bolex camera on Kodachrome. Voice and music was added later. Final work now on a disc. The purpose of these films was recruiting young men, explorers, to BSA and memories of for parents and scouts. You know, it works.